be Steve Lee. I will wait him to join us on the stage. Um, Steve is general manager of Hong Kong and Mio Yang Financial Technology, named at Mio Tech. Um, the topic he is presenting will be ESG alternative data from collection to delivering interface. So I already see Steve yeah. is yeah. on the screen. Hi, and I also see Hi, uh, your screen. So I think you are good cool. to go. I will pass the floor to you. Cool, thank you, Kathy. So um, today, very happy and excited to be here to share about um, what we are doing, right? I uh, wanted to share a bit more about, um, as I mentioned, as Kathy mentioned here, uh, ESG data, right? Especially alternative data, um, the technology behind how we collect this type of data and how do we deliver that. So, sad. okay, so um, about Miotech. So, who are we? We are fintech startups um, established in 2017. Uh, we focus on ESG data, especially in Greater China area. So, uh, what's different about uh, what we are doing, right, compared to so many existing um, ESG data providers? First of all, uh, our comprehensive ESG coverage. We cover um, eight, more than eight um, eight hundred thousand companies in the region. Uh, well, be it private company or publicly listed company in, in, in greater air, uh, greater China region. Um, not only the width, but also the depth, right? Next is the, the about the depth of data we have for each of the company. We have, you can see here, more than 200 um, ESG data point for each of company. But if we more importantly, we cover different types of um, information. Uh, I, will, I will elaborate a little bit more but mainly is about self-disclose and alternative data, which is, um, I think, it, which is unique in the market. Next, uh, we can do all these, right? Um, a huge amount of data, a, a big uh, a coverage of companies, and also very in-depth data on all these companies. We can only do that thanks to our unique technology, the, um, New te uh, the technology that we are using, like um, AI, especially um, natural language processing, and also knowledge graph algorithm, etc. So help us to build all these, um, uh, make all these possible. And last but not least, is our flexibility in delivering our solution, largely because of our technology-based approach uh, on on ESG data. We can deliver our solution in different channels, like. API, I will talk more later on, and uh, say database, SANG, or even our SARS web portal as a terminal. So um, if we move on, so uh, I would like to talk a bit about right uh, ESG data itself. So I, I, I think a lot of you, um, you know, have a good understanding on what is ESG, but in case you, uh, you don't, so ESG stands for environmental, social, and governance. So what's important? So what is DSG data of a company, and how do we? What's important about it, right? So um, ESG is basically anything about a company except the financial statements, right? Uh, it's not only about the number, the growth, the revenue um, about the company, the profit about the company. It's about everything else. How does a company doing? Um, how how does it treat its staff? How does it um, is it polluting the environment? Um, how does it um, what what did it do um, in response to social responsibilities? And say for example, how how does it um, handle the pandemic situation? Right, all these are considered as ESG, and we can see with the awareness of the people. Right around the globe, especially after this pandemic situation, um, even in the financial industry, people now putting more and more focus and having more and more demand in um, what we call responsible uh, investing. Right, and um, as a result, they need more accurate, more uh, better data to support their investment decision um, for this um, ESG score. So um, that is the very quick background about uh, ESG, right? And then 
And then we go to ESG data. So what kind of ESG data we have? Um, according to us, we mainly classify them in two types. First type, you can see here, self-disclosed data. Very obvious, right? Company report their, their um, ESG performance. Um, are they polluting? Uh, what's the consumption of a power, carbon emission, and so on? All of these in their reports. They may um, publish a report quarterly or annually, right? The ESG report, or they mention it um, in, the, in their uh, 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 annual report as well. And we can see a uh, lot of the exchange in the world, they're having more and more requirement in, in this kind of ESG disclosure. So this is something that they have to do. Um, the problem of this kind of data is that, well, if you are a company, right, you only want to report the good thing about yourself. Um, you may not want to really disclose everything, including the not so good uh, ESG uh, things that you're doing. Um, and also, the, a big problem, another big problem is, is it's low in velocity. You update it only, say, once a quarter or once a year, uh, may not be enough for, for um, financial institutions to make their own um, investment decisions, right? So for example here, we can see um, company emission, of course, is the, is the uh, uh, self-disclosed uh, data, energy consumption, employee diversity. Um, I name a few addition here, director board of director um, distribution, diversity, and, and so on. Um, and you can see here in the screenshot, how do we present all this data? We use, as I mentioned, we use technology to automatically capture all the all the information published in the company um, annual reports, and we understand and digest them, and 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 help uh, our clients to organize it and and deliver the, the data to them. Then move on. Next, uh, this is really uh, we think uh, we are doing um, that uh, uh, very uniquely in the market. It's about alternative data. So, what is alternative ESG data? Uh, sometimes we call it controversy as well. Um, it's basically um, something not dis not disclosed by the company. Uh, it could be information from a third party, right? Internet web, government records, NGOs, anything, social media, or even satellite image. The good thing about it is is high velocity. It can update every day, every minute. Um, <clears throat> of course, the, the bad thing about it is it's very scattered and very messy, right? Basically, you need to have a very effective way to organize them, put them together in order to make good use of them. For example, um, I could name a few here, environmental penalty, which is, you know, sometimes company they don't disclose by, disclose by themselves. You have to find out in different um, government or NGO channels. And or say employee satisfaction, right? Um, it's only, ha well, employee may put their comment in social media, other, um, job seeking websites and so on, right? But company won't disclose it uh, in their annual report. Uh, discrimination. Uh, in some place, it's not illegal to discriminate. Um, so, and, and it's not required, so there's no penalty, but, uh, and there is not required for the company to report that. So you won't see it uh, in, the, in the annual report or, or any ESG report from the, from the company. Worker strike, lawsuit, I can name a lot, a lot, a lot. In, um, as I mentioned, in Miltech, we have more than 200 data points related to that. And uh, here is also some uh, screenshot. You can see how uh, we put them together and try to analyze a company's um, different areas of controversies, uh, what they're doing good and not that good, right? And compare them with the other payers in the industry and so on. So um, yeah, to move on, um, consider that you have all the disclosed information and also all the alternative information. Um, but as I mentioned, they are really messy, right? There's so many 800, more than 800,000 company, each of them has so many data. How did you effectively put them together? You need to understand very clearly the relationship between these companies. The companies could be say subsidiaries, they could be suppliers. Uh, one company could be supplier of another. They could be a client, they could be shareholder as well. So you need to be able to extract all these relationships. And um, in Miltech, we do we, 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 we extract the information and use uh, our technology, knowledge graph, put everything together uh, in order to formulate a big picture 
of the ESG performance of the companies. Say here is just a very visual uh, representation of say one company, we get all the its uh, branches or subsidiaries and also customers and also um, providers and also individuals, right? Like uh, board members, key executives and link them together. And here in a shareholding structure diagram, we saw um, was the um, shareholding structure of a company, uh, hold by whom, and uh, the company uh, is hosting uh, which companies and so on. Sometimes it could, uh, sometimes it could be quite messy, right? Uh, in multiple layers of holding and so on. We put everything together in our database, and then with all these, we can do our full picture analysis uh, on all this ESG alternative data, this self-disclosed data. Put them together and find out the whole coverage. It's not only about the least company itself, but also about all the company related to them. Say, for example, if a company, it reports very good in ESG for themselves, but um, their suppliers is actually polluting the river every day. So, they, of course, they won't they won't mention it, and 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 people may not aware of that as well. But with the help of technology, we can consolidate all this relationship and performance, and then we can see the full picture. So here. Uh, and then we can do a benchmark and rating. As you can see here, we, we have a rating. Uh, we break down into different categories, ESGs and each of them. We can then put a score, right? We can start to compare and, 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 and do it in a quantitative way and giving it a score. So the comp we know very clear about the co company, how does it, uh, how is it doing in terms of uh, uh, ESG, no matter in self-disclosed or controversies, right? Um, and also overall. So that's how our approach overall to ESG data. And here is our technology background um, in Biotech. How do we collect the data and then apply our technology, transform it um, to some information and organize it in as a knowledge? And then how do we help our client to uh, make uh, intelligent decision making? And how do we deliver the, the data to our client? I don't. I won't go into detail on this, uh, all these uh, you know, small boxes. If I have a chance, I could share more information about that. Um, next, I want to talk about delivering interface. So in Miltech, we do, you know, we, we are very flexible. We do all uh, different types of um, delivery channels um, from the very traditional, um, you know, <laughs> file extraction, uh, which is on demand, uh, very um, customized data scope to a uh, say database sync uh, or web portal uh, uh, data terminal, etc. But then, uh, what our clients more and more clients like, and what we like to provide nowadays is our API, which basically make good use of all our technologies. Uh, we could we, we 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 because we we take a technology approach to all these data collection. So the data can be refreshed in a very high frequency, very frequently. Say every day we have new data coming in from different channels and we update our score, our, our benchmark uh, and our rating as well. Uh, and it covers all the companies in our database. And with the API, our client could, you know, receive the uh, update in real time. Um, they could also optimize their data volume. They don't need to, you know, basically get everything. They only get the delta of it, or they only um, subscribe to the data that they are interested to. Say they are interested in only say uh, 20 companies in their portfolios, um, then they just subscribe that and they don't need to um, see everything, right? And they don't need to overload their, 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 their data traffic. Um, and then, and in the same time, they could receive the most latest update in real time. And what's um, uh, even better is that uh, with the API, uh, our clients is charged by their usage. So uh, we can work out a, a, a very uh, affordable package for each of our client. And um, they, you know, if they use more, um, we charge more. If they use less, then we charge less. It's a very um, flexible package that uh, our clients love. So um, to move on, I would like to give uh, one example or case study on about uh, to summarize what I've just mentioned, right? From data collection to process, then to our API delivery. So there's a requirement from our client. Um, they want to somehow measure a discrimination of 
uh, Asia companies. Um, they have no way to uh, quantitatively measure this in order to fit in to the investment decision model. So uh, we have some brainstorm session with them. And then uh, finally, what we decide to do is we use our technology to um, extract or to scan through the hiring uh, job seeking website in, 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 the, in mainland China. And then uh, we try to, and then we get all these job posts for millions of, com uh, of companies, right? And we try to identify and understand them and locate, is there any discriminating content? And then of course, once we identify that, we give a, a score, right? And then um, every day we refresh the data and we update our score to all these companies um, related to discrimination and so on. As a result, then we could really form um, something that can be measured about discrimination, discrimination for each of the company. And as I mentioned, with the relationship um, knowledge graph we have, we can combine the list of company with the subsidiaries and with its branches and maybe their supplier as well. And then you can see the whole picture of say this company, um, how's their performance in discriminating? Are they having a lot of discrimination? How does it compare to the rest of the same industry? Not only the list entity as well, but also your subsidiaries and also your suppliers, right? Um, are you using a supplier that is heavily discriminating in when they hire people? And then we can very easily um, perform the analysis of that because we can then quantify it and generate rating and benchmark them um, with the rest of the industry. Um, then deliver, uh, we, basically our client can subscribe that for our API channel. They um, refresh the data of the relevant company they're interested on demand, right? They, uh, because the data is always up to date. And then uh, through this API channel, um, the client is charged according to the number of calls. So uh, this is something um, our client find very useful. And um, yeah, I think this is a, a, a we, basically this is a, a, the model that we um, continuously doing, right? To, to, to serve our client. Uh, if there is any new, uh, you know, requirement or initiative raised by our, uh, our client, we can look into it and try to solve it with a new technology and alternative data way then we uh, find out a good way to deliver that to our client, um, be it uh, API channel or other channels. So um, I think, yeah, that's the, that's the case that uh, I want to share today to summarize about the um, you know, overall approach we have on data collection and, 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 and data delivery channel. And here is just some example on uh, some collaboration we have in, with the industry, um, equity research from Goldman, uh, which uh, uh, we, we, we are very happy to, to, to be involved on the, as a data provider, and also our, our, our um, media partnership with Economist about um, some of the ESG investing uh, and, uh, report they have, and, and we uh, share some information and data we have, and then uh, some additional information about Mutech, and of course, <laughs> some award that we have. I don't go through them one by one, of course, uh, but yeah, we just show we're doing pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's it uh, for me. Uh, this is what I want to share today. So uh, if you have any question, feel free to let me know. Hey, Kathy, um, can't Hi. hear you? Yes. Hey, hey. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Steve. So, um, no if problem. anyone of you have uh, questions, I think uh, you can feel free to reach out to Steve. Yeah. And then uh, maybe uh, we, since we still have a few minutes left, I think maybe six minutes, five minutes. Hmm. So I have a questions for you that um, I, sure. uh, I I heard uh, uh, your, I know your company uh, uh, have hmm. very good potential, and maybe would you mind to let our audience on the floor here to hmm. know a little bit more uh, the background of your company like that? I know you you your company has been invested by some very good investors. Uh, very credible company 
yes and and you are yeah. developing outside hong kong yeah 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 sure sure so as i mentioned um our company is uh founded in um 2017 uh the seat uh, and uh, is funded by horizon venture if you know right uh, uh our our beloved uh, uh, uncle lee lee ka sing uh his uh capital uh, venture capital um we just uh, went through a a serious round uh a plus early this year and as i know we are closing another round very soon so uh very soon you you will receive you should see some uh news from us about uh funding part so thank you so uh very excited and uh also very happy um we recently joined science park right um and uh, i think this is a very good opportunity for us to expand um here locally especially our r d um capability in, in in hong kong um so yeah and regarding a business plan uh we have so we have an uh, office here in hong kong and also in mainland china uh well, here in Hong Kong, focus on the the market, of course, in Hong Kong and also outside, um, you know, outside Hong Kong, well, except in China. So we 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 are expanding very quickly with our clients in Singapore and also in Europe. So we do have some Europe as a managers. I think you know we all know that Europe as a managers they have very high awareness and mandate on ESG uh, topics. So uh, we see a very fast growing uh, uh, business over there. They have a strong need of uh, ESG data, especially in the Greater China region. So, um, and also in terms of the data, I mentioned that our major focus now is in the Greater China data scope, right? Uh, and in this, but in the same time, we are working to expand our data. I think the next, the next uh, 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 area that we are looking at is uh, Southeast Asia. So we want to expand our data coverage to uh, say company companies in Singapore and uh, say Indonesia, right? They have a lot of business over there. Um, palm oil, you know, a lot of uh, things that could have a, a lot of ESG related data that we are very interested to. So really looking forward, I feel very excited about it. Well, um, uh, just, I just knew, uh, learned about um, your big step saying that you will uh, uh, try to create product from data outside of uh, China. So I think it's a very yeah. big step of your company. A congratulations first. And then um, I, I heard about um, your product, your yeah. delivering interface through your presentation. And then uh, would you mind to let the uh, audience on the floor to know a bit of, uh, of um, who are your targeting users, um, right. the team or the individual will use your product? Yeah. Yeah, usually, um, currently, our ma main customers, they are all financial institutions. So uh, covering both buy side, sell size. Um, as I mentioned, you know, as a managers, as a owners, they have a very strong uh, uh, um, ESG mandate. It's, uh, mm -hmm. So that they are a major client group. And then also the sell side, right? A lot of the research house, um, just uh, in the example I show in the, in the, in the research report from Goldman, like, um, they 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 do a lot of research related to ESG as well, um, so they need a lot of data about it. Um, so what's more, um, you know, except the financial institution by side, sell side, we also have a quite a few um, client in the academia um, area. So we work with the universities, um, you know, no matter it's local or overseas, um, because you know there are a lot of research doing going on related to ESG. Uh, we have some very funny, um, interesting topic uh, uh, there that I learned that um, we work with uh, a, a, a professor in, in the local university that he's doing research um, comparing or by using the, the, the employee satisfaction and how is it and, and, and study how is it related to a stock price rebound of a company. So while well, obviously the result is if you treat your staff better, then you rebound quicker, <laughs> but it's good to see it in the in the, in the research uh, report, right? And we are happy to contribute the data uh, to make it happen. Um, yeah, so many many interesting things happening um, in the academia uh, area as well. So this is our another client group, and now we are also working, trying to expand our client uh, footprint to say uh, all the least company basically. Um, with our, um, you know, capability in data technology, 
uh, we can also help the the, the listed company on you know uh, analyze their their ESG performance and um, tell them in which area they should look at and uh, tell them uh, and how could they improve right in their ESG performance. So this is something more tailor made uh, uh, service I would say at that point. So this is something we are exploring as well. Well, that's a very new concept that you are helping the company to um, improve their own uh, ESG rating. Um, so yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for your time here. I think uh, we are about the time to uh, complete things. Sure. Yeah, yes. Then, uh, thank yes. you.